Hello everybody, it is I, Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, uh, making part four of our Chrysler Concord timing slash water pump rebuild, replacement, and repair. Uh, the first videos you saw the breakdown of the upper intake, the breakdown and removal of the valve covers, breakdown and removal of the radiator cross member, and also removal of the radiator so that we could gain access uh, to the front of the engine. Um, just a note on this job, this vehicle has been in an accident, and when I removed the, the cross member, I found that the uh, AC condenser has been bent. I'm not real sure yet what I'm going to do with this. Uh, I know my customer is watching this video, and so what I'm going to do is just revisit this whole situation when it comes time to start putting everything back together because uh, I was able to get it apart without damaging the radiator or uh, as you can see damaging any of the any of the passageways there the, I am a little concerned though as to how the heck I'm going to put it back together so we'll just see what happens there and uh, just cross that bridge when it comes so today we are going to start removing the front half of this engine and so that's going to consist of right now the two tensioners and the crankshaft. And um, now it is time to start getting serious on this job. Um, part of the job today will be setting the engine to top dead center. If we don't set this engine correctly, then when we try to put it back together and start it, it will completely eat itself up and I'll end up having to buy these people a new engine. So from this point on, uh, in my mind, uh, per my professionalism, it is time to slow down now so we can speed up later. So the first thing I'm going to do here, uh, the past few videos, you've kind of seen me pause it and just run back and forth uh, to my toolbox. Actually, today I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get all my tools set up out here, everything that I think I'm going to need. So that way I can just continue moving forward. Um, once I get that done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at removing any of my sensors. You see these? That's really easy to break off while you're in here working. You could smack it with a wrench or something and break break that off or break this off. So I'm going to remove those. Now this sensor is your crankshaft position sensor. And while I've got this open, I just kind of want to show you how this works. Okay. So as you can see, this, this is your crankshaft position sensor. And this is, we'll just keep it simple for you. We'll call this your sensor wheel. Okay. Now down in here where all that sludge is, where my finger is, right there, there's the sensor right there. You can see it's right underneath that slot right there, okay? Well, there is a magnet inside of there, okay? And as this turns, right, okay, as this turns in timing with everything else, it creates a magnetic field in between that magnet and this pulley, okay? That magnetic field sends a magnetic pulse every time it makes contact right here pulse 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 it sends a timed magnetic pulse to the computer of this car okay now the ecm then takes that magnetic pulse and translates it into a electronic pulse it then says sends that electric charge basically through the system to the spark plug or the coils which then causes a spark inside of the engine so if you ever wonder on some of these vehicles how spark is created it all starts with a magnetic field and a magnetic pulse right here at your crankshaft position sensors and your camshafts and your camshaft sensors and uh, that sends a signal to your computer your computer translates that signal into a spark and so therefore that's how you get your spark so so again, all this is precision stuff. So what we'll have to do once we get these belts off, and uh, I actually after I get these pulleys out of the way, is I'm going to set this engine to top dead center. And what top dead center uh, is, also known as TDC, top dead center is number one piston all the way up on the compression stroke with all the valves closed. Okay, And uh, once we set the engine to top dead center, we will not turn it again after that and then we'll be able to to take our timing chains off and all of our stuff apart all right folks well i'm going to go ahead and stop talking your ear off i'm going to pause it and uh, get my tool set up all right folks 
So as you can see here, right now I'm just starting off with a large assortment of sockets, a few different ratchets, uh, long needle nose pliers and angled pliers, pry bars, hammer, and a belt tool. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our belts off of here. In order to do that, you're going to use a 14 millimeter socket on your tensioner pulley here. Just simply loosen it for now. And then you're going to go here where your adjustment is and you're going to use a 13 millimeter socket. You're going to turn counterclockwise and you're going to take and remove your alternator belt. Okay. And we'll just set that aside there for now. And then from there, you're going to use a 13 millimeter socket on your spring loaded tensioner. You can see the springs right here. And you're going to loosen it right there. Just go ahead and loosen it. And then you're going to. I, I'm using a, uh, a, an actual belt tool, but you could probably just use a socket and do this as well. And so you're going to get your tool in there, and then you're going to push down, and you're going to loosen your belt. So I'm going to pause it here, and uh, so that way I can use both of my hands and get this done. Okay, once you have your 13 millimeter bolt removed, your adjustment bolt, Go ahead and turn your tensioner clockwise all the way back. So this way you take the load off of the spring. And you don't have to worry about this spring. I mean, look at the size of that spring. So that now we can go ahead and remove this tensioner. We don't have to worry about this spring hurting us. All right, I will be right back, folks. Okay. As you can see here, you've got... Both of my tensioners are now off. My spring-loaded one and my adjustable one for my alternator. And now what I need to do is I need to get this bracket off because it is in way of my timing cover. Okay, in order to do that, I need to pull my power steering pulley off. Um, it's looking like I'm not going to have to move it out of the way, so that's kind of nice. We just got to get this pulley off here. <clears throat> so I've got my, my power steering puller set up there. And I've got my crescent wrench. I've just got it set up, resting on my uh, on the frame part of the headlight assembly right there. And so I'm going to try to do this one-handed real quick just to kind of show you how it works. But I may need to pause it and set it down again. Let me see if I can get you better focus. There we go. All right. Sounds fun, huh? You can see it coming off. Works just like a press. Just pulls it right off. Okay, when you're working in here, be very careful of stuff like this because you can damage it. And there's your uh, power steering pump pulley. And your tensioner pulleys. And now that gives me access to be able to pull this bracket off. And then from there, it'll be time to get serious and get this engine set to what's called top dead center. So we can go ahead and start with what I consider open heart surgery. Okay, folks. <clears throat> so now that I've got the six bolts removed from my tensioner bracket and out of the way, I now have full access to the timing cover on this side. I have full access to the top of the timing cover. I have full access to the timing cover on this side. Going to be a little tight in there next to the AC compressor, but... I've opted to save some time and go ahead and not remove that because I can't get in there. Now, this is where we really need to start getting serious on this job. Um, before we start pulling this timing cover off and before we take this uh, harmonic balancer off, we need to set this engine to what's called top dead center. And if I do not do this correctly and 
I do something wrong, it could have an avalanche effect and lead into me not doing the job correctly, which could then lead into this engine basically completely blowing itself up within the first 30 seconds of starting it. So top dead center again is number one cylinder all the way up on the compression stroke with all the valves closed. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna determine that. I'm gonna start determining and finding top dead center from this point on, and I'm gonna constantly make sure that I'm at top dead center before I do any more work. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine per my harmonic balancer and bolt, and I'm gonna watch my cams, and I'm gonna get everything set. Now this vehicle, most vehicles on their harmonic balancers will have markings that will tell you where top dead center is and they'll mark it, but either A, I'm completely covered in grease and oil and can't see, or B, this is one of those vehicles that doesn't have one. So you really kind of got to know what you're doing. Now after I set top dead center out here and I pull my, my uh, harmonic balancer off and my timing cover off, my timing chain will still be connected and everything, so I will still be able to turn the engine while it's open and make sure that I have what's called true top dead center. And then at which that point, I'll start removing its timing chains, uh, pulleys, camshafts, you name it. So, all right, folks, so I'm going to get set up to find top dead center. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you how we get set up for what's called top dead center. And again, top dead center is cylinder number one, piston, all the way up on the compression stroke with all valves closed, whether it be one, whether it be two, whether it be three, whether it be four, whether it be 100, all valves closed. And um, you do that by uh, turning your crankshaft. Um, now, it's very easy to be 180 degrees off. And like I said before, a lot of cars have markings on them. Some of them don't. So you got to know what you're doing. Since this vehicle does not have a marking, I'm going to wait until I get everything off and I'm going to find tr what's called true top dead center by lining up my chains, my cams, and my crank before I start pulling off um, all my chains and my gears and stuff. So uh, what we've done is I've taken just, I'm using my, my magnetic finder here, and I've already set it to, to top dead center. And how you can tell it's at top dead center right now is as you can see, both of the cam lobes are up. So if both, if, if the elbow of the cam right here, if both of them are pointed up, then that means that these valves are completely shut all the way across. And that means that this, that cylinder number one piston should be all the way up on the compression stroke. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, it's kind of hard, but how you can tell, is you can take something and just, and if you can see, we're bottoming out right there. Okay, so that tells me that my piston has traveled as far up inside of the cylinder as it can, meaning it's all the way up, and my valves are closed, so that means that I'm at top dead center, or within a few thousand degrees of top dead center, um, on my compression stroke. So that means that I can start taking it apart. So let me show you again what this looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna turn my crankshaft clockwise by hand. Now I've gone ahead and I've removed all the spark plugs. So that way there's actually no compression in this engine, making it a heck of a lot easier to turn. And, and you'll watch, you'll see my dowel rod there traveling up and down as I turn this engine, see? And you can see the cams opening and closing the valves down in there. You see that valve? See that that valve's now traveling down as the cam makes contact right there. Let's see if I can get you some good focus there. Okay, and my dowel rod isn't traveling anymore. So now as the engine comes around, there you go. Now, now it's coming back up, okay? You see it going back up there? All right, so now that it's coming back up, I'm gonna wash my cams right here, okay? And they're coming back around too. 
Now I want them both to be at an angle. As my rod comes back up, see it moving? My cams are coming into position. Now I'm just gonna do fine movements and it stopped moving. So right there, both cams are up, all four valves are closed. And again, down inside of there, I'm bottomed out at top dead center. Okay, so now this engine is set at top dead center. So theoretically at this point, I could take these chains off, take everything off and put it all back together and not be worried about the timing being off so much that, um, that it's gonna bend any valves or break any pistons as I start. All right, folks, so I'm gonna pause it here and figure out what my next step is going to be. Okay, so removing harmonic balancers can sometimes be tricky business, <clears throat> especially because uh, nine times out of 10, or my, well, actually 10 times out of 10, pretty much all harmonic balancers, doesn't matter, make or model. From Nissan to Ford, American to domestic, they're torqued on pretty good. Um, a lot of Hondas and stuff, they only require like 125 foot-pounds of torque. Some of these bigger engines require uh, more torque as well. Some of them are on with as much as two to 300 pounds of torque. So getting them off can be tricky. I've had, I, I've had harmonic balancers take me as long as two or three days just to get off. This one was not so tricky. And again, see, here's the deal. If we disconnect our AC condenser, it'll cost our customer more money, money that I don't think is necessary because we'll have to discharge the Freon and then we'll obviously have to replace it. And that's a whole nother job by itself. So what I did was very carefully just kind of lift it up out of the way. So this way I could get inside of here with my impact gun and my air. And then I just used my impact gun, as you can see. I was able to get the clearance that I need, and I used my impact gun, and I got my bolt out. And, and also, you can see that's blue Loctite on this bolt. So, <laughs> yeah, that's why those are hard to get out. Now, this one was pretty easy to get out. So, the next step is going to be getting that uh, harmonic balancer off of there. So, I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to go get my three, my three-tooth jaw puller. I'm going to go ahead and get that harmonic balancer off.